Welcome to the first video in our series in joint and bar product costing. In this series, we are going to look at what joint and bar products are, the different treatment of joint and bar products, how we allocate costs between the joint products, and finally, we will consider whether or not joint cost allocations are relevant for decision-making purposes. Let us consider our learning objectives for this overview video. First, we want to understand the idea behind joint and bar products and what makes them different to the manufacturing of other products. Then, we need to be able to differentiate between the different outputs from a joint process. Finally, we need to identify the different methods of allocating our joint costs. We will unpack each of these different methods in our subsequent videos. Let us begin by considering what is the idea behind joint and bar products. As with any other manufacturing process, we take our raw materials, labor, and overheads, and we subject them to the manufacturing process in order to get out a product at the end. So how does a joint process differ? The key difference is that instead of just getting one product out, we could get two or three or even more products simultaneously from this process. It is important to note that the products are produced simultaneously. Some examples of such processes are meat processing, where you can get out various different cuts of meat from a single carcass. Also, the production of petrol can result in various different petroleum joint products, such as kerosene and paraffin. Finally, the processing of gold can also result in the production of other metals, such as uranium. It is important to note that for joint processes, we cannot distinguish between the different products until a specific point known as the split-off point. Before this split-off point, we cannot trace the costs to the individual products. This is very important to remember. Finally, after the split-off point where the products are separately identifiable, the products may be subject to further processing. These further processing costs can be traced to the individual products to which they relate. Now let us consider what can come out of the joint process. First, we get our joint products. These are the main products which we intended to produce. The production of these joint products is crucial to our business being successful. These joint products normally have a significant sales value. How do we treat them? Our joint products are the only output to which we allocate our joint costs. We will briefly identify the major techniques to allocate the joint costs to the joint products later in this video. Next, we have our bar products. Bar products are those products which are incidental to the process. They are not our main products, we didn't intend to make them, and the production is merely a consequence of producing our joint products. Generally, they have a minor sales value in relation to the joint products, and their production is not crucial to the success of the business. How do we treat them? Importantly, we do not allocate any of the joint costs to the bar products. Remember, the joint costs are only allocated to the joint products. Rather, we calculate the net realizable value, which is the selling price of the bar product, less any further processing costs and we deduct this net realizable value from the joint costs before we allocate the joint costs to the joint products. Next, we have scrap. Scrap basically refers to any leftover raw material at the end of the production process. These raw materials are still identifiable as such at the end of the process. The treatment of scrap is the same as that for bar products. We do not allocate any joint costs to the scrap. Rather, we deduct the net realizable value of the scrap from the joint costs to be allocated. Our final type of output is waste. Waste has no value and may need to be disposed of at a cost to the company. How do we treat waste? Again, the joint costs are not allocated to the waste. However, the cost of disposal of the waste is added to the joint costs prior to allocation to the joint products. Notice that this is different to the bar products and scrap, 
where we subtract the net realizable value from the joint costs. For waste, we add the cost of disposal. Now that we have seen the different outputs from a joint process, let us consider how we can allocate these costs. Remember, the joint costs are only allocated to the joint products. There is no allocation of costs to the bar products, scrap, or waste. In this series, we are going to be looking at four methods of allocating the joint costs, namely the physical measures method, the sales value at split-off point method, the net realizable value method, and the constant gross profit percentage method. Something important to consider at this point is how do we choose which method we should apply. As we work through the series, it is important to remember that no matter how sophisticated a method might look, they are all arbitrary in nature and there is no cause and effect relationship as we cannot separately trace the costs to the products because the products are not separately identifiable. Because we cannot base the allocation on cause and effect relationships, we rather need to base it on benefits received or fairness criteria and which method makes the most sense in light of what we are producing. That brings us to the end of our overview of joint and byproduct costing. In our next method, we will be having a detailed look at the physical measures method. See you next time.